G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Friday morning here in Australia, the market is up again a little bit, 1.34 trillion now, so up sort of uh, 400 sort of, uh, I don't know if that would be 400 billion, because eh? that's what that, that would be there. So I think that's, yeah, 400 million dollars in the last sort of 24 hours or, so, hours or so. And again, look, we can see a sea of green there, so things are looking positive. But, you know, we're going to get into the charts and I just want to reiterate, this isn't full bull mode yet. Just because we had a dip and a recovery doesn't mean we're out of the woods just yet. And when we have a look at the charts, I'll show you what I mean. But at least for now, it's looking good. But what we need to remember is the weekend is now upon us and there's generally a retracement over the weekend. So again, no guarantees in life. None of this is financial advice. Uh, let's move on and again we'll have a look so BTC dominance has dropped a little bit so again everyone's getting super bullish and so they're starting to move uh, into some altcoins and that and I'd just be very very careful <laughs> even in altcoins there's been some great gains but look the losses uh, generally take away from a lot of those gains depending on where you get in and gas prices 17 so that's not too bad but still not cheap Double digits, uh, not good uh, in the long term. Short term, I guess we'll just have to suffer through it. All right, let's have a look. So again, Bitcoin looking nice. Ethereum back over 2,000, which is nice. But the weekend is here. I think we're going to see some more losses again. And look, Tether <laughs> hanging in there at a dollar. A lot of fun about Tether for a while there. But then we heard that they're going to come out with their... Uh, report soon to show you know exactly how they're backed they I'm sure they want to get regulated now they don't want to simply just die off and we've got another tether story coming up as well but let's have a look obviously some gains there so things are looking good what's done the best in the top 100 All right XLM nice bit of a move 16% OKB flow waves comp Adam Terra Luna moving nicely theta a bit of a move uh, lend the old uh, Aave token, uh, polka dot. So look, some good gains there. Nothing sort of too crazy, obviously. I mean, you know, XLM, the best mover, so nearly 20%. But the market's only up 1.7%. And again, I'm just I'm mindful of the weekend coming. All right, what about losses? Has there been any big losses in the top 100 in the last 24 hours? Oh, Rune, Thorchain, got a bit sort of hammered there, so they're still not doing so well. Uh, Ucash, don't even know what that is, but uh, it's down a little bit. Uh, MDX, Polygon, again, they had a pretty good bounce back. I think they got down to nearly 56 cents, something like that, and now they're up around 90. They were at about 90 cents. Filecoin down a little bit. Uh, Synthetics Network token, again, pretty much kind of ranging at the moment. It was down at $5, got up to $11, and now sort of sitting around $8. So look, no really bad losses, except for, you know, the Rune one. That would definitely hurt a little bit. But likewise with the gains, no kind of crazy gains, but look, you'll take any kind of gain, even if it's a half a percent, over a half a percent loss. So we need to kind of take that in context. Now let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart, and this is what I want to look at. So we had a nice kind of bounce back. We can see that we dropped down below the Bollinger Bands, bounced off here, and bounced back up. And now we're right in the middle of the Bollinger Bands, Bollinger Bands, sorry, but we are still on a downward trend. So what I'm worried about is that again, we can already see it red that this is gonna roll over and come back down lower. Now again, really, unless we break below sort of 20, you know, it's not even 28,000. It's, you know, if we get this line right there, we're gonna say about 27,700-ish, thereabouts. Unless we break below that, then we're still just ranging between these two lines. So I'm not really overly concerned. I do think we are going to probably continue to bounce around and eventually make our way down to around about here. And then that will be the critical moment. Is this going to hold or is this going to be where we go lower? Because this is definitely lower than we have sort of uh, been in quite some time, particularly on daily candle closes. Everyone was holding, uh, hoping kind of that we we're going to hold here that $31,000 level. We lost that came down to here and look we even wicked down to here so i mean that was pretty low 20 now 29,000 sort of 300 but again bounce perfectly off this trend line as long as we're sort of staying above it it's not overly bearish 
but I mean you could extend this line all the way down if we keep coming down and bouncing off it and bouncing off it well that is bearish unfortunately and at the moment we are still in a downwards trend so again really the level I'm looking for is you know you can round, round it off to around about 28,000 I think if we have a daily candle close below there mm, yep things are probably going to get bad and again this could play out over weeks and months we could just keep going down and down and down We'll just have to wait and see. There's no guarantees. Maybe this was part of that Wyckoff uh, accumulation and this was the spring sort of low or maybe that was. Who knows? It's you know so hard to know. Everyone keeps throwing it over the top of these things and uh, you know comparing it and having a look. I don't know. All I know is at the moment, very, very careful with diving into the altcoins. Hopefully the bottom was in somewhere around about there, but if they're not, they are going to get crucified. So again, I say this every video because I just want to make sure my listeners understand my point of view and where I'm coming from. You may have been in the market longer than me and know a whole lot more than me. And if you do, awesome. Let me know down in the comment on the comments. You know what you're doing at the moment. But for me, I'm really just focusing on kind of Bitcoin and Ethereum. I'm not playing with the alts too much. It's not to say I don't put a couple of dollars in here and there. You know, if I see Synthetics Network down at sort of five, six dollars, I will put a couple of dollars into that. I like it. If I see Aave under two hundred, I'll put a couple of dollars into it. But that really is kind of where it is. Just a couple of dollars, mainly focusing on Bitcoin and Ethereum, and making sure I have some stable coins sitting on the side. That's my play. Again, let me know down in the comments what your play is. Uh, and again, yeah, the weekend. Ugh, I think we could come back down uh, and maybe even make a new low. Maybe we're coming down to about sort of 28,000 over the next uh, day or two. Who knows? Maybe not. Maybe it's up from here. All right, BlockFi. They've been having all sorts of troubles. Uh, as we said, with just one single, what was it? Uh, Alabama, I think, came out. Well, now there's three different places, but they are looking to go public. So they are going to do uh, an IPO, I believe. So we come down here. BlockFi aims to go public in 12 to 18 months' time. According to documents circulated to investors Wednesday amid growing regulatory scrutiny of the, of the cryptocurrency lender, BlockFi is set to close its Series E on July 27th, the documents showed. The round, as previously reported by the block, amounts to 500 million. People familiar with the matter told Coindesk. Now, the uh, investor documents reviewed by Coindesk say BlockFi is expected to command a five point, se sorry, a 4.75 billion dollar post money valuation. So again, I like BlockFi. Now, you know, there's obviously regulatory issues and their uh, lending rates aren't that high at the moment, but that's because it's in a downtrend. When it goes into an uptrend, they increase it. And again, I'm not trying to shill it to you. Uh, I like it. I use it. Uh, and I spoke about it yesterday. There's ways to make money in a downward trending market. And BlockFi is one of them. Celsius, Crypto.com. Uh, I am in the process of getting a Celsius uh, account. I don't have it yet. I don't have a Crypto.com. I uh, likewise will uh, do the same and get one of those. I do have a BlockFi account uh, and I have been with them for ages and there's a link down below if you want to join them. Uh, you know, up to you. But they obviously have some issues. So we go down here. Regulators in Texas, Alabama, sorry it was New Jersey, that's where it was. The original one. And New Jersey, each allege uh, BlockFi is an unregistered security, oh sorry, BIA, uh, is an unregistered security in violation of state laws. Uh, New Jersey is giving BlockFi until July 29 to explain itself. If the pair fail to come to a resolution, the state could halt BIA account onboarding. Now again, that's just halt people from continuing to join. It's not closing it down. That was the same thing in all these other states. And if you go over to BlockFi's Twitter, they said that they're working with all of these states and they believe that they are completely compliant. And it even says down here, BlockFi is talking through with New Jersey after Alabama issued its own order. His firm tweeted, we have active dialogues with regulators worldwide. So they're working with people and it says here, we firmly believe that uh, the BIA is lawful without referencing the Lone Star, Lone Star State regulators. So again, we'll have to wait and see. There's just, there's so much FUD out there at the moment and it just keeps coming. And it's not just BlockFi, like it's Binance, it's BlockFi, you name it. There is an active campaign to push this down as low as they can. They're not going to ban it. 
They're not going to cease it. All Everybody knows the system that we have right now is broken. It is broken, and there's no way to fix it other than to just print it into infinity, unfortunately. All fiat currencies go that way. They know that this is the future. They need to slow it down, push it down for as long as they can until they can get everything set, and that's the regulations and all the rest of it, before they can let this thing loose, and then they can capitalize on it. So unfortunately, I think there is a high probability that we probably do continue to go down for some time. Again, until all the governments are ready, the USA wants to be the financial superpower of the world. They are going to adopt crypto, 100%. We saw that survey a while ago. It was probably a couple of weeks ago now. Uh, sorry, not a survey. I mean, there was been plenty of surveys saying Americans want to get onto crypto, but they were saying that the USA is the country most ready to adopt crypto. That is what they're going to do. They are going to be at the forefront of the financial revolution. They are going to adopt crypto 100%. Bitcoin, Ethereum, you know, you name it, DeFi, it's all going to be in there. But they want to make sure that they have it sort of locked, not locked down, because I've got another story coming up that's going to ex uh, explain some things as well. But they're going to want to make sure they are on top of it before it kind of gets away with them and they don't have the regulations set what they want, uh, set how they want. But BlockFi, unfortunately, they're next on the line at the moment. Like we said, uh, FTX, they're going to have their issues around, you know, releasing synthetics tokens, synthetics network, you know. Uh, as far as I know on their exchange, they don't have too many synthetic assets, uh, synthetic assets of stocks. Uh, they are looking into that, but we'll have to wait and see. I might reach out to Kane on Twitter and sort of see uh, where they are at with that, whether he'll answer me or not. <laughs> Who knows? But, you know, we're both Australians, so maybe he might, uh, you know, reply. Uh, that would be really nice. So BlockFi, yep, yeah, they're next uh, in the line. And there's going to be another one coming after this. I really do think we're going to be pushed down for a number of weeks to months uh, until US regulators are ready to sort of, they have everything in place, all their ducks in a row, and then they let it go. BlockFi is not going anywhere. Binance isn't going anywhere. Uh, this is all just part of a, a bigger plan, I believe, for the USA to gain control, uh, not full control of the industry. I don't want to make it sound like that. But again, yeah, have their ducks set. So when it goes, they can take full advantage of it and be at the forefront. All right, so... U.S. credit union regulators uh, wants to know uh, how its firms handle DeFi. So here, this is the interesting part that I was speaking about before where the USA isn't going to come in and be full heavy-handed. And, and this set it up perfectly. So the U.S. is in a race to be the center of this new industry, much the way this country did so well with the internet economy. Uh, so uh, this senator is saying, I feel compelled to mention that one reason America dominated the internet industry is because 25 years ago, Bill Clinton's White House published principles that said the government will not interfere with the growth of this new technology. Millions of Americans have jobs today due to that early guidance from the federal government. And it's going to be the same with cryptocurrencies. That doesn't mean they step back and do nothing. They're going to bring in regulation and all the rest of it, but they're not going to come in and be heavy-handed with it and stop this from emerging because they're at the forefront. Again, I reported, uh, there was an article written a while ago, America is the most ready country in the world to adopt cryptocurrencies. It is going to be the future. Again, they've already got the digital yuan. That is, it's not a cryptocurrency as such, but it's digital money. That's, it all started with cryptocurrencies. There is no safer money that we have at the moment. It's not to say it'll be this way forever, but than Bitcoin. It's the hardest money. It's capped. It can't be, you know, there's ways to manipulate any markets, but it's not owned by anyone. There's not a central point of failure. There's not someone who, you know, kind of can, you know, owns, you know, half of it or anything. It is the most decentralized thing that we have out there. America is going to regulate it, but they're not going to be too heavy-handed. And it's going to be because of this. They got on the front foot uh, of the internet and didn't go heavy-handed with it, did really well, and they're going to do the same thing with cryptocurrency. Oh, excuse me, moving on. All right, 
More billionaires moving into cryptocurrency. So despite failing to specify the precise type of digital assets, Thomas uh, Pedafi, hopefully I said that, Peter Fi or something. Oh, God, that sounds horrible. I don't even know uh, how to pronounce his name. I'll leave that part alone. Uh, Thomas said that he had allocated some of his wealth into, crypto, into the crypto market. And that is going to increase. The amount of money that's going to come into crypto is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. It just won't happen overnight. It's going to take time. Again, America need to get everything sorted to make sure that when they let you know this thing go, that they have everything set in place to number one, be at the forefront of it, and number two, you know, ensure safety and people don't get completely ripped off and all the rest of it. So, I'm not against regulation. I'm against overregulation. Regulation is what we need for this to go to the masses and for, you know, as they say, for it all to go to the moon and for us to see these crazy half a million dollar Bitcoin or maybe million, two million, ten million, like some people have said. Number one, that's going to take regulation. It won't happen without regulation. And number two, it's going to take time. You're not going to get to a ten million dollar Bitcoin in the next two years. You probably won't get to it in the next ten years you may get to it in the next 20 to 30 years. I easily see Bitcoin being worth half a million dollars within the next decade, easy. Uh, outside of the half a million, you know, I don't know, maybe again we make it to a million in 10 years. But at some stage, these gains will start to slow down with Bitcoin. They won't just completely come to a stop though, because it is a fixed supply. Once the 21 million are done, that is it. There's no more Bitcoin. So that scarcity will continue to push it up. All right, so as I spoke about Tether before, we all know of USDT. Well, now they're coming out with EURT, a Euro Tether dollar. So Tether, the company behind USDT, has announced that Cream Finance is the first DeFi protocol to integrate its Europeg stablecoin. So Cream Finance will be the first DeFi platform to offer EURT to the users in the DeFi ecosystem. So again, Tether of coming out and they said, you know, they're going to provide that report to show exactly how they're backed. Uh, and I think that's going to be massive. I personally don't use Tether just because it's been too, you know, secretive about, you know, how it's backed and all the rest of it. That may change if they come out with something that shows how they're backed. A legit document that can be, you know, backed up and other people can come and quantify it and all the rest of it. And I really think that if Tether can come out and be fully regulated and fully transparent and all the rest of it, I think that's going to be the moment that's really going to send crypto to, you know, all new heights because that's the issue that's kind of been holding it back. A lot of people have been worried about Tether and hopefully, <coughs> oh, excuse me, they can get fully regulated and prove, you know, be completely transparent and all the rest of it and where their money is and all the, and things like that. And I really do think that is what's going to make the market absolutely explode. If Tether can do that, if Tether can't, you know, there's always going to be that kind of, you know, it's just going to be hanging over the head of crypto for a long time until they can do that. And I think that's why they've probably been quiet for a while. The people who run Tether and that have probably been getting together, making sure that they're getting everything, you know, accounted for because they know the regulators are going to come after them if they don't. And I'm not saying they were dodgy before, but it was definitely shady. I think now they are getting set to make sure they are fully regulated and that they can then, because they make a lot of money. Look straight up, they make a lot of money. They are heavily, heavily used. And they saw that USDT, USDC, sorry, was really reining them in and catching them and looked like a lot of people were moving away from Tether. And Tether doesn't want that. They make a lot of money from Tether. So I think, again, that is going to be a turning point. And they did say that the, the report was going to be out in the next few months. It all does feel, and the, the funny thing is, the regulators said they're going to have uh, their, you know, for stable coins and things like that, their reports out in the next few months. It feels like in the next few months is probably when it's going to get ready to explode. So maybe it won't be till sort of September, October or something like that before everything seems to come out all at once. You know, the crypto regulation comes out, the Tether report comes out, and then all of a sudden things will start to move very fast. Unfortunately, 
I think there's a good possibility that we continue to go down until then. Again, there's going to be more stories, you know, like Binance. It looks like FTX is going to be uh, in the firing line. And not that anything bad's going to happen to them. It's just going to be all this FUD around it. And then there's going to be the regulations that come out. Everyone will get compliant. I, tell, I can tell you that now. No one's going to not want to be compliant. They just won't make it. So everyone will get compliant. And then it's going to be off to the races after that. So I just get the feeling we're going to be in a downward trend for a couple of months. I've been wrong before. None of this is financial advice. But just everything says a couple of months time, a couple of months time, all these things are coming. I think it'll be, you know, one week you'll get the regulation. The next week uh, you will get uh, Tether bring out their report and show uh, how they've done, uh, you know, probably the XRP uh, SEC lawsuit will probably then come out the week after that all that sorted and then you're just going to see this big massive move that's what my gut feeling is telling me and that's all it is it's, it's just a gut feeling we'll have to wait and see whether I'm right or not all right wire has partnered with ethereum scaling protocol polygon to provide a fight a fee a fiat <laughs> a fiat to usdc on ramp to customers across the world so wire is a blockchain payments provider and announced today that developers around the world are now able to provide usdc stable coins to customers in the polygon ecosystem so again polygon i can't say it enough i'm so glad i stuck with them i bought very cheap i literally picked them up at i got some under two cents and i got some just under three cents so on average let's say sort of two and a half cents I picked up Polygon 4 and it actually went down and got cheaper I could have bought it for cheaper but I didn't and I was going to sell it so many times and I held on and it has been it'd have to be probably my best performer I'd say particularly when it was up around that $2.20 mark it's definitely down from that now but the Polygon ecosystem continues to grow and we hear things like this uh, big polygon polygon bull and they are actually looking at becoming a legitimate layer two because at the moment they're a side chain and ethereum has said that they will still need side chains and things like that but they are looking at becoming an actual legitimate l2 as well so eventually where you won't have to use a bridge they will just be part of the ethereum ecosystem uh, that's uh, what I read. We'll have to wait and see whether that pans out because at the moment uh, you have to transfer from ETH to the Polygon network. That may change in the future. All right, uh, ETH 2.0 seems like it's getting closer. Ethereum transition to uh, ETH 2 gets a formal improvement proposal. So it's EIP 3675. So EIP 3675 is a proposal to officially transition Ethereum uh, to proof of stake. So we've still got uh, 1559 coming out, and I think it's August 4th. Uh, there's all these EIPs. Now they still have to officially get over the line and be approved and things like that. I'm really hoping Ethereum ETH 2.0 can roll out before the end of the year. I don't overly like my chances, but I've got my fingers and toes crossed that they can do it because I just think it'd be really good for the space and it'd just be good for all those ethereum holders who've been holding for a while in all fairness you know I've said this before we need to remember investing in crypto outside of really bitcoin is like you think of it like you're a VC you're putting money into early development projects before they they don't actually have a project half the time at least not a finished project they are still in their beta testing and all the rest of it so you are an early backer and if it does well congratulations you're going to have done well unfortunately a lot probably won't many will fail many are just complete and utter money grabs and scams so hence why i say just be careful in the crypto space now i'm invested in uh, it'd have to be 20 or 30 different coins but very minor plays in most of them. I've only got a couple of big plays and really my biggest plays, well, it's Ethereum at the moment because it did so well and Bitcoin and then outside of that and they they make up about 50, 60% of my total portfolio, if not a little bit more. And then after that, it's all just, you know, nothing more than sort of five, seven percent plays. Uh, it's quite small uh, in my altcoin space in comparison to those two. And again, that's just how I play it and that's the way I see it like a vc some of these are probably going to do well uh and unfortunately 
a majority of them may not and you know I only need a couple to do really well and then they'll make up for the losses all right last but not least so JP Morgan gives wealth management clients access to Bitcoin and Ethereum funds. So advisors working for the firm are now able to deal with Grayscale Investments and Osprey funds. It was not that long ago that Jamie Dimon was saying he catches anyone trading Bitcoin, he would fire them. Now that's what he said publicly. I get the feeling like in the background, that wasn't the case. He was again just trying to keep the market down because they were building their positions and things like that. But now they are openly saying, yep, you can now invest into cryptocurrency, i.e. Bitcoin and Ethereum, uh, through Grayscale and Osprey funds. So again, watch what they're doing. Don't listen so much to what they're saying. It's not that they always lie and never tell you the truth. They're, trust me, there's times that they come out, oh, don't trust me, I don't like that word. You're just going to have to... You know, go and do your own research and you can see it out there. They're not always lying, but what they are doing is there's an agenda behind anything that they're saying. They are money makers for the richest people in the world. They don't just give out free advice unless it benefits them. So, yeah, very interesting space that we're in at the moment. Again, I don't want to harp on, but please just be careful. It, you know, it feels like it's a really good bounce right here. You know, yeah, look at that. We're on the way up and it's already turned red and it's only early in that day. So this could still turn green and it could go up, absolutely, or it could get worse because the weekend is upon us and traditionally over weekends we still have retracements somewhere from sort of Thursday night right through to sort of Sunday. Most of the time uh, it has happened somewhere around sort of Friday, Saturday. So all of these gains may be completely wiped out over these over this weekend or they may not. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. If you're on that gain train at the moment, congratulations. Generally, that's uh, only short term. Uh, we're in the gain train. We're still in an overall downtrend on average. <sighs> Hold on. That's all I can say. All right, I'm out.